Praise God. We welcome you to the World Evangelical Ministries live broadcast on Facebook this Sunday, December 1st, 2019. We are still continuing with our series, Building a Strong Relationship with God. The topics are study the scriptures, pray always, flee from sin, compromise is a sin, the world is not your friend. Today's topic, pray always. So we start with prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father and our God. The eternal rock of ages. The I am that I am. We are before you. We are all weak. And we are nothing. Without you. But with you Lord. We come boldly to the throne of grace. Pleading the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ. That all who hear. And all who speak in your name this day. Father you bless. The work of your hands. You bless your hearts in order they may run this race and complete it. That as we teach, pray always today, everyone we know, both the speaker, narrator, and hearers, that it is important to always pray. We welcome your Holy Spirit to guide these proceedings. In Jesus, holy and mighty name we have prayed. The outline, pray always. Prayer is a private communication between you and God. Repetitive prayers, God is not hard of hearing. Number three, the right way to pray. Number four, pray with and without understanding. Number five, prayer should conform to God's will. And number six, prayer is a two-way communication. First reading. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we, and as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Praise the name of the living God for God's word. In this topic, pray always. It's about individual prayer to God. We're not discussing today community or group prayers. So when we look at verse 6 that's just been read, it says, But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. So first you have to go, is a communication between you and Father God. Not with anybody else. You are just before him, talking to your father. Number two, repetitive prayers. God is not hard of hearings. 
When we look at verse 7, what did he say? When you pray, don't babble on and on as people of other religions do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Some denominations pray the chaplet. That's a repetitive type of prayer. Again, an unbiblical type of prayer. But that's a subject for another day. But even in those who claim the evangelical Pentecostal, they still repeat the same words over and over again. God doesn't hear. Prayers should come from the heart. Babbling on and on. They're just words. Because God sees you and I. More than a mother sees her naked born child. Our hearts and innermost thoughts are bare before God. God knows what we don't know as we come before him. Are we being sincere or insincere in his presence? The thought that he knows what we may not even be aware of, that we're going to do after leaving his presence, should humble all of us when we come before him. He knows already. What's the right way to pray? We're going to item three. And I'm going to class two groups of people. Those who are not children of God and those who are children of God. And for those who are not children of God, I say, you don't have God's righteousness. Because only God confers righteousness. And Anybody appearing before him must come in his son's righteousness. Righteousness. Sorry about that. If God is not in you, that means you are not born again. He will not hear your prayers because you are disobedient. Because his son, Jesus, is standing at the door of your heart, knocking and asking to be let in. He says, please, can you allow me to come in so we can chat? But you've refused to allow him to enter and make you whole. So God will not hear your prayers until you first obey. So as you listen to this broadcast, if you have not yet known him, please accept Christ as Lord and Savior now. So that God will confer his son's righteousness on you and you can begin to appear before him in confidence from this moment forward. But for those who are born again, God has conferred his righteousness, his son's righteousness. But when you appear before him, you still have to appear before him and greet him reverentially. That's why the Lord taught us in verse 9 of Matthew chapter 6. In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Then the second thing you need to do, Acknowledge his coming dominion, the one coming, and of the present heaven and earth, as well as God's sovereignty over everything. What does it mean? It means God's will supersedes every other will in his creation, including your will. That's why in verse 10 he said, pray this way, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Praise the Lord. Number three, you pray for God's sustenance, which is his, your ability to earn a living, to help you, to have strength, and do the needful to put food on your table if you are parent. But if you are going to school to help you to be disciplined and listen to instructions. So when you pray for his sustenance, it is not... So God is not going to send manna from heaven. No. But he's going to help you because he knows what you have. He's going to help you to tap into those abilities in order to be the best that he made you to be. That's what he means by in verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. That daily bread is the ability to earn a living. Not to go begging. Praise the Lord. The next that's why verse 12 said, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Meaning all who have hurt us. We forgive them. 
the blanket forgiveness. But someday I'm going to speak on the subject. God does not condone impunity. Because a lot of people have come off like this saying, when people have done so bad, even in the society, they should just be let go. No, that's not what I'm saying. You forgive those who have hurt you. That means you have, you have no plans to do anything wrong for them. You pray for them so that God can help them to know him. Praise the Lord. Continue on the right way to pray. In verse 13 he said, And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. You are praying to God to lead you and I away from those things that could hinder your walk in him. And to protect you from Satan and his gang. At the same time, you acknowledge his power. That's God's power. Glory and everlasting kingdom. Because you are saying, your for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. We got item four. You should pray with and without understanding. Yes. I'll read. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 14 to 15. He says, what is the conclusion then? I will pray with the Spirit. I will also pray with understanding. I will sing with the Spirit. I will also sing with understanding. So, you have to pray both, which is why we spoke about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. If you don't have, if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, how can you pray in the Spirit? And those who teach that speaking in tongues is from wherever. I mean, yes, we know some demon, uh, demonic tongues. But if you have the Spirit of God, you have the right Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. And if you pray without understanding, you are speaking. God is speaking through you. Praise the Lord. And you must always pray. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, he said, never stop praying. Never stop praying. Never stop praying. Whether you are closet, that's one. Even in your office, in your school, always pray in your heart. Always. That way you have the presence of God in your life. Please note that as you embody your heart to God, both with understanding and without understanding, the Holy Spirit is present. So he will take over, even when you are sleeping or in danger. That's the, that's the importance of not grieving the Holy Spirit. And that is why Satan does everything to get God's children to sin. Because he knows when you sin, the Holy Spirit is not present. But if the Holy Spirit is there, he will take over. When you are unconscious, in sleep, or you are about to face danger you are unaware of. And I'm going to read Romans chapter 8 verse 28. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. Praise the Lord. We are going to item 5. And so we take a second reading. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed saying, Oh my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. Praise the Lord. God's son is praying to the father. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. And then in verse 42. See, God knows the future. You don't. I don't. Whatever we're asking for could turn around to bite you and I. That's why you should ask God. But after asking, always subsume your asking to God's will. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. If there's nothing else you learn today, it is when you pray and complete whatever you are doing before God, always add 
Not my will, but let your will be done. If you some pray that prayer, you and I have no right not to pray the same prayer. Praise the Lord. See, God gave us free will. Therefore, we are responsible for the choices we make. But we must know that there are consequences for every choice we make. Let me illustrate. You are born again but single. You pray for a God-fearing life partner. Maybe that future partner that is perfect for you is a few years removed from your meeting him or her. You get anxious after a period. I wonder why God has not brought such a person across your way. In your head, you meet someone you consider suitable. You marry the person. You have not committed any sin. But you didn't get God's best. Had you surrendered your will? Meaning, had you said, God, let your will be done, not mine. Had you surrendered your will to God as you prayed that prayer for a life partner? Or for that matter, any other prayer you are making? Not minding a, a potential consequence that you could remain unmarried for the subject we just illustrated. You would have made your search for a life partner God's issue. And whatever outcome would be the best for your situation. Many of us love taking wilderness journeys because of the cho choices we have made or make. In the wilderness, we turn around to blame God when the going gets tough. <laughs> but I hear someone say, but we prayed. Yes, we prayed. I prayed. Yes, we did. But we did not ask for God's will to be done at the time of our prayers. I know many worldly prosperity preachers teach that praying and asking for God's will to be done at the same time denotes lack of faith. I know. That's false. That's the doctrine from the pits of hell. Their teaching is false because they don't understand what faith means. For them, faith is about acquiring things, yeah, worldly things. They see faith and loss for the things in the world as the same. So it's not the same thing as what I'm talking about. Because if they had understood that faith means believing God and having a relationship with God, they would not be teaching this falsehood. Those who teach and accept such teaching do not want God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, which is part of what Christ taught on, on how to pray. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's will is for his creation to be perfect. And we know it's the devil and his demons who don't want to see that happen. Since it will be their end. We go to item 6. Prayer is a two-way communication. When you make your request to your earthly parents, do you just run off with your waiting for an answer? I think not. But many of us rush out after praying. We fail to listen. We have just prayed, but we, we fail to listen. But we came to our Father to pray, to talk with Him, to have a relationship, to chat. Because prayer is actually chatting. As you prayed and unburdened your heart, did you try to listen? Because God tells us things even as we unburden ourselves to Him. He's talking back to us. He's trying to gauge what is going on in your life. He knows, but he wants you to come clean. You and I must practice waiting and listening to your, our inner person. That is because our spirit is in contact with the Holy Spirit while we are praying. Sometimes even as we pray, the path to follow is clear. Other times God is telling us to be patient. Or that what we are asking for is not for our good. Remember always to ask God for those things that will enable us to run and finish the race successfully. That is the prayer. It's not about asking for things. It's about asking for those things that will enable us to run the race and finish the race successfully. Praise the Lord. Always remember. And the most important of the ask for any child of God should be wisdom and understanding. Wisdom and understanding. I'm going to use three translations of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7 to drive home this very important point. In the NIV, it says, Wisdom is supreme. Therefore, get wisdom. Though it costs you all you have, get understanding. 
in the NRSV, he says, the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. And whatever else you get, get insight, which is exactly like knowledge. And the New Living Translation says, getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. And whatever else you do, develop good judgment. Yes. Get wisdom. Develop good judgment. Don't forget my words or turn away from them. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 5, New Living Translation. Get wisdom. Develop good judgment. Don't forget my words or turn away from them. God is speaking to you today. Because if you're wise, you will not be led by the nose by these false pastors and Jews all over the place. You will not be led by the nose because you are studying the scripture and you are getting insights from God directly and he's able to lead you and guide you in the path of righteousness. Praise the Lord. Wisdom is better than wealth, better than any, if our wisdom is better than anything that the world can offer you. I didn't say so, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 8 verse 11. For wisdom is better than jewels, and all that you may desire cannot compare with her. That's why those who are wise have got this understanding of this scripture I'm about to quote, which should be, the, it should be put in every home. Because those who are wise and have understanding, they understand and appropriate the scripture which says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. And in the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. This Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. Because those who are wise and have understanding know that the power of the gospel is in death to self and the world. Unless a grain of wheat dies, it abides alone. You want to be fruitful in the Lord's vineyard? Die to self. Die to the world. Die to your family. Die to your relations. Die to anything that matters to you. But just live for God. Those who know this scripture, Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, do understand that only being willing to share whatever comes from knowing him, and standing for his name and in his name, no matter the cost. They are the ones who understand the power of God and whom God used for ministry. Cost of becoming like Christ here, Brother Paul is talking, includes physical death. He died for the gospel. Lest we forget. Persecutions. He was persecuted and so many of others of his time. He was ostracized and rejected. And you could be ostracized and rejected by family and friends and your peers. You need approval of men and women. You're done. But if you want the approval of God, be willing to abandon all and follow him. Praise the Lord. Only then can you begin to apprehend the power of God. And see God's power manifest in your life. And in whatever ministry God has led you to do. And if you make that commitment today as I speak. The devil will attack you in every area of your spiritual life. I can assure you of that. Because the moment he sees that you now know how to pray effectively, he will begin to launch his attacks in your mind. And his favorite weapon is that of fear. Ah, fear, what they will do to you if you try so and so. Or what you stand to lose in the office if you persist. Or those threats of people who hate you, they could kill you. They could even get assassins. And some who are in the, with the path with the devil can even invoke evil spirits to attack you. Because the devil knows that fear destroys faith. What did I say? Fear destroys faith. Because if you have faith in God, you can't be afraid. If you have already died, Ready to die. Hey, <laughs> what happened? Don't give in. Don't give in. I give you a scripture to use as often as you see as a being attacked in your mind. Always tell yourself when that happens. In Psalm 118, verse 17. I will not die. Instead, I will live to tell what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord. I will not die. Instead, I will live to tell what the Lord has done. 
I repeat, I will not die. Instead, I will live to tell what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord. Please remember that no one can kill you without God's knowledge and without God allowing it. So if it's your time or my time, so be it. But the rest are sure that God is your protector and that not one hair of your head can be lost. I have been in this battlefield for the past 30 something years. And I assure you from experience, when they come, they come in waves. But what happens at the end of it all? I'm still left standing by His grace. Because it's not my time. When it's my time, I will go. But no one can take me. Not human, not demon, not Satan himself. And that is what I'm trying to encourage you to do, all of you who are hearing my voice. Stand firm in that which you know. And God will preserve and protect you. And when is your time to be called home? He will call you home. And the angels will be rejoicing as you join the congregation of the faithful in the heavens. Praise the Lord. See, Satan hates and fears spirit fear praying children of God. Because God uses them to intercede for the weaker ones. And to expose the powerlessness of Satan and his demons. That's what I'm trying to talk about. I've seen the powerlessness of Satan. I've seen the weaknesses of his demons. They have no power for a child, to harm a child of God. Always remember that. You want to be in one of God's army? You want to be one of God's soldiers? You want to be one of God's, in one of God's army, one of, one of the soldiers in God's army? Rise up in your heart today and join. In your closet, propose to pray fervently and always for the church of God. Not for what you are getting. No. And pray for the release of Satan's captives in your town, city, and country. The enemy, the onslaught is much. In the church especially. You can intercede for your church. So that false teachers and pastors will be exposed and driven away. By the truth. But in your closet, you have to propose today to pray fervently and always for the church of God and for the release of Satan's captives in your town, in your church, in your city, and your country. For the manifestation of the power of God in your community. So that the enemies who, have held, who are holding many captive can be released. That's your mandate. That's my mandate. Praise the Lord. Remember, I'm speaking to God, those who have known him. If you have not known his name, if you have not had a personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, I plead with you today, surrender your life to him. And go through this broadcast again and join the army, the faithful army that God is raising at this hour. Praise the name of the living God. Father God, Jehovah, we come to the end of today's broadcast. We thank you for the grace. Father, use the words. Use your words to touch those whom you have elected for this moment. That nothing shall by any means take away what has been sown. And that in your army are going to be praying saints, faithful saints in this new army to destroy the power of the devil. Let's pose it actually for his powerlessness. Bless their homes. Protect them. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over their homes. Over the homes of all who are involved in this ministry. Father, meet with them. Encourage them when they come before you. And let them know if these things are so or not. All this I pray and ask for in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. See you guys next week.